Hi, I'm Marissa. I will be reading from Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. <laughs> My no maybe most of you have read the entire series. I have. Um, it was banned in 2012 because a teacher got arrested in a school in South Carolina for reading it to his kids. He wasn't charged, but apparently it contained pornographic scenes. But the whole series has no sex scenes whatsoever written. So way to go. <laughs> I'll read it from the first chapter. The monitor lady smiled very nicely and tussled his hair and said, Andrew, I suppose by now you're just absolutely sick of having that horrid monitor. Well, I have good news for you. That monitor is going to come out today. We're just going to take it right out and it won't hurt a bit. Ender nodded. It was a lie, of course, and it wouldn't hurt, that it wouldn't hurt a bit. But since adults always said that when it wasn't going to hurt, he could, he, he could count on that statement as an accurate prediction of the future. Sometimes lives are more dependable than the truth. So if you'll just come over here, Andrew, just sit right up here on the examining table. The doctor will be in to see you in a moment. The monitor gone. Ender tried to imagine that little device missing from the back of his neck. I'll roll over on my back in bed and it won't be pressing there. It won't feel tingling and taking up the heat when I shower. And Peter won't hate me anymore. I'll come home and show him that the monitor's gone and he'll say that I didn't make it either. That I'll just be a normal kid now. Like him. That won't be so bad then. He'll forgive me that I have my monitor a whole year longer than he had his. We'll be not friends, probably. No, Peter was too dangerous. Peter got so angry. Brothers, though. Not enemies, not friends, but brothers. Able to live in the same house. He won't hate me. He'll just leave me alone. And when he wants to play buggers and astronauts, maybe I won't have to play. Maybe I, just, maybe I can just go read a book. But Ender knew, even as he thought it, that Peter wouldn't leave him alone. There was something in Peter's eyes. When he was in his mad mood, and whenever Ender saw that look, that glint, he knew that one thing Peter would not do was leave him alone. I'm practicing piano, Ender. Come turn the pages for me. Oh, the monitor boy's too busy to help his brother? Is he too smart? Gotta go kill some buggers, astronaut? No, no, I don't want your help. I can do it on my own, you little bastard, you little third. This won't take long, Andrew, said the doctor. Ender nodded. It's designed to be removed without infection, without damage, but there'll be some tickling, and some people say that they have a feeling of something missing. You'll be looking around for something, something you were looking for, but you can't find it, and you can't remember what it was. So I'll tell you, it's the monitor you're looking for, and it isn't there. In a few days, that feeling will pass. The doctor was twisting something in the back of Ender's head. Suddenly, a pain stabbed through him like a needle, from his neck to his iron groin. To his groin. Ender felt his back spasm, and his body arched violently backward. High head struck the bed. He could feel his legs thrashing, and his hands were clenching each other, wringing each other so tightly that they ached.